hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mommy's gonna buy you a mockingbird. If that mockingbird don't sing, Mommy's gonna buy you a diamond ring. If that diamond ring turn brass, Mommy's gonna buy you a looking glass. If that looking glass gets broke, Mommy's gonna buy Bring me my sandals, Tatala. No, 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 baby, not those. The good ones with the beads. Okay, I have the snacks. Make sure we have enough water. We have to be quick, Habibi. There's not enough time. No, sweetheart, we're not turning back. Once we're gone, we're gone. So, if you want it, pack it. Mama... She's moved her whole life in boxes before. She's ready to do it again. Ooh, let's play a game. You find, I pack. Okay, listen to me. We are going to be walking for a long time and it's going to be hot and I, I don't know if there's gonna be enough time to stop. Will you please listen to me? I really need you to take this seriously. What's that song you're singing? Ishmael taught that to you? You're right, Ish. <sighs> this isn't fair. This shouldn't be happening. Just one more time, I have to put my kids second. Yes, this is our home. I'm so sorry, my sweet baby, but we have to leave. Forget about him. He's nothing to you. No, not that tune up. Not that tunic, Bubala. You're nice one. When we get to my family, I want them to know how important you are. And since when are you so sweet on Isaac? He'll be fine. Hey, he's your half brother. You're not his keeper, and he's mm. no more important than you. You know, there's going to be so many other boys where we're going. Boys your age, and boys younger than you. You can be the leader. You're, You're an, an heir. heir. This is your birthright, and if we can't find that kind of respect here, we'll have to find it somewhere else. I'm going to go to him, and I'm going to tell him it's either Ishmael or Isaac. You choose the firstborn or the firstborn by me, your wife. Oh, God, please let Avraham see that I'm doing this for his good, to keep us together to protect us. Oh, I tell you, if you don't laugh, you cry. Your Baba? <laughs> Listen, Ibrahim may be your father, but he is no model of a man. He just obeys. 
God, Sarah, they're all the same voice to him. Be glad she kicked us out. Hmm. Yes, but what about Papa? If he makes the right choice, we won't have to leave, Tati. Hey. Hey, listen to me. Stop that crying. I, you can't let them see you hurt. I know. <laughs> it hurts. I know. Imagine this. Let them see you laughing instead. Uh, laughing because of how good we're going to be. Ishmael, baby, mama's got you. Hmm. You won't miss Ishmael. And I promise he won't miss you either. And hey, if you can't laugh, you're really going to cry. <laughs> you don't need a brother. You don't need a father. It's going to be better where we're going. Yala. No. Go. Let's go. I see these two women preparing to begin separate journeys. And yet something between them seems shared. I want to know more. I want to open up this story and see if we can get inside the cracks, inside the sinews of this old, old story of exile. I wonder, Amichai, if you could lead us into what this thing called storytelling is all about. Welcome to storytelling, where the ancient stories are still alive. And we, we get to take the old stories and tell them in a new way. On this morning of Rosh Hashanah, for many, 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 many years, our ancestors have been unrolling the scroll to tell the story of the Abrahamic family, the patriarchal story where we come from, of Abraham, the big patriarch, whose name literally means the big father. And the women with whom he built the families of the earth, Sarah, Hagar, and there were others. And the descendants are alive right now today, squabbling over the inheritance. What does this ancient story have to teach us every new year? What does it call on us to listen to today. Sarah and Hagar, the mothers of the Jewish and the Muslim nation, do they have to be at war? Does it have to be an either-or equation? Does it have to be a zero-sum game? Just because that is what we inherited, does the story have to stay the same? Once upon a time in Jerusalem, 2,500 years ago, the very first public telling of Torah took place. The Bible came to life as the scripture of a nation. It will become the textbook of so many in this world. On that fall day, today, Aleph of Tishrei, the prophets, the priests stood on stage and read from a scroll, which back then was a big technological innovation, and they read in Hebrew from this Torah that they may have just written. But since like today, back then, they brought of humans, mavens, mevinim, people who knew enough to understand the ancient story in its original Hebrew, but make it accessible and real and alive in the language of the day and in its idioms and needs. At the time, it was Aramaic. And the people who gathered, some Jewish, some not, resettled in Zion after exile into Babylon, needed a story to create national unity. And the mavens, the mevinim, made the story come alive 
And so for 1,500 years in our tradition, every time Torah was chanted in its original Hebrew, the Mevinim were alongside, side by side, screen by screen, to make the ancient come alive, to challenge what we inherited, to translate and interpret, sometimes with a bandwidth of creativity. That tradition died out from Jewish life about a thousand years ago, but storytelling that many of us in this room co-created some 20 years ago brings back the maven and the mevinim and translates and interprets the Torah again, invites us into the story that sometimes requires a radical new reading. So on this brand new day of the new year, the anniversary of the first telling of Torah so many, many years ago, we will be once again revisiting the story of Avraham, Ibrahim, Abraham, the great father, on the day in which the women in his life have to make a terrible decision, and he as well, and we as well. What does it mean to come face to face with this tradition, with this story, when we are seeking some repair? Scripture becomes our script, this stage, our storytellers arena. You all, the original people of Israel, once again at the foot of Sinai, ready for a dose of revelation. Ready? Yeah. That was lame. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Whether you're here in person, that was great. Online, we're going to open the Torah. We're going to listen to what she has to say, and we're going to talk back together. There's something here for us to learn and to be revealed. So thank you for our storytellers, for our mavens. Some of them you'll recognize and some are new. Some amongst us today came of age as be mitzvahs by becoming storytelling mavens. If you want to do that, you can still join us this year and the years ahead. No matter how old you are, we do it for all ages. More about that later. But for now, I invite you to sit up open your heart, put on your seat belt. We're going back in time and forward. Welcome to the rebirth of laughter. This year's brand new Torah for this moment, for this time. We're going to open the ark. And so I want to invite all those of you who've had a bee mitzvah, who came of age as storytellers this past year. A bunch of you here and your families, come on up. We're going to open the ark, bring out the Torah, continue the story. Who's joining me from the B'mitzvahs? Yes, don't You've got this.
coming of age rite of passage graduates this past year. We are so glad that you're back, that the journey continues. You're standing in the shadow of an olive tree. There are two on the stage, because olive trees go back a long way. And soon we're going to lift the trees of light that this Torah is sitting on. And thank you, Rabbi David Klein, for not only being our shofar blower, coming later today, but being our Torah fixer for the trees of life that are renewed. We're going to take out the Torah. I invite you, if you are able to, to rise. So we let this tree of life emerge within us. And uh, since you're the closest, why don't you take out the Torah? And then we're going to ask you to hand it from one to the other. And you're representing all the families of came of it. Find your seat with majestic elegance. And uh, in just a moment, we're going to go back to the story where Hagal, Sarah, Isaac, Ishmael, and Abraham are in a major family psychodrama that we will join. And uh, we want to invite for the honor of the first Aliyah to come up to the Torah and or stand in your seat, which might be, frankly, much more convenient, uh, if you are celebrating something new. Like in our story, there's a baby born after a very long time. Pretty big deal. Uh, babies this past year, major milestones, like a wedding. Maybe you finished making a movie after 21 years. <laughs> and just stepped out to the bathroom. Just saying, you never know. Um, if you feel like you are honoring during this complicated time an achievement, a milestone, a marker, something you want to celebrate as brand new, from babies to love, from achievements to homes, to degrees, to a book of poetry, to being healthier, you know who you are. We invite you to stand up where you are, and if you really want it, come up to the stage. We got some cheat sheets with the cards that give us the blessing, and we have a purple tallit to help us celebrate what's new. Really, everyone's so shy? We need a few of you on stage. Come on, for visibility. Are we celebrating your bat mitzvah? Anything else I need to know about? 
You bought land. OK, we want to know about that. Great. Jen, you got a brand new job. And you're awesome in general. Uh, OK, we're going to let you grapple with our big purple tallit. It fits multitudes. Sandy, get up here. Ask me about the teaspoon later. Thanks, Jen. You can just wrap it around yourself. Here, come as close as you can to Sarah. It's going to be an amazing Torah chanter. Great. Feel free to just drape it around you, but be easier, Rebecca. We don't want you to strain your arms. And uh, oh, I see a baby coming up. Amazing! Third birthday is count two. Whatever. If you feel like you're celebrating new, we need to celebrate as much new as we can. All right. So there's a little more room over here. Here are our cheat sheets with a blessing. They're also on the screen. Folks online, if you are joining us with brand new things, we feel you. Hey, Rachel, welcome. Hi, guys. A couple more. Yeah? OK. The, we start on the side with a long prayer. You know this, Sean, so you know this by heart. OK. Let's find our spot. Double click. We are here now. All of us. New things. Baruchu et havaya hamevorach. Baruch havaya hamevorach leolam vaed. Baruch havaya hamevorach leolam vaed. Baruch ata havaya eloheinu ruach haolam. Asher bachar banu im kol hamim. Venatan lanu et torato. Baruch ata havaya. Noten ha Torah. Amen. Ve Avraham ben Me'at Shana, ve Hivalad lo, et Yitzchak beno, ve Tomer Sara, Sechok, Asali Elohim. Ko hashamea yitzchak li. No, no, no. Oh, there was a promise of a future, no luck. And now, this boy, this beautiful boy, is our last chance. I know who I answer to, and I know what legacy I have to protect. So Avraham's old, and his heart's got soft, but he still has eyes and ears. He just might not have his wife and his son if he doesn't make the right choice. Vatomer Sara Sechok Asali Elohim Koashomea Yitzakli. You should have heard her laugh. She laughed and laughed and laughed like everyone could share in it. Except that's not who she really is. No. Her joy is hers alone. It's her family's, it's exclusive. But hearing me laugh, hearing you, my sweet boy, no, we're not a part of her world-ish. <laughs> she wants to keep it that way. She can't take it. Mm. Come here, Bubula. Let Mama explain this to you. You were my miracle baby. I'm not that young. 
And when I held you close to me the first time, I couldn't decide whether to laugh or cry. Ah, but you know, after all your father and I have been through, to have you, Tatala, that's on air. Me, 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 la, 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 Abraham. And he caught him, Sarah. He allowed it to be in the east and up. Vaigda, ha, yelled, Vigama. Vayas, Abraham, he shed a doll. Vayom, he got mallet, he thought. I didn't even want to go to that party. Okay? And I didn't want you there either. To see him celebrated instead of you, to see all those people see him and walk right by us. I don't even want that kind of life for you, but to know that you wouldn't even get to have it. And that's why I have to protect you. Asher yada le Abraham Protect you. I will. I will. And that's why I have to protect you. And that boy? Sure, sure, he's your half-brother. But a boy like that, you can't trust him or his mother. You broke the script, baby. You got too close. You played too much like him. You were too free like him. We stick to our own kind. He wants your father to see you the same. She wants your father to see you the same. But they're not like us. I don't want you to have to be his keeper. I don't want you to be like him. You, you are, are not like, like him. him. And, and now, now we have, have to, go. to go. But I don't want to go. We have to. We don't have a choice. But clearly, you don't want to go. We don't have a choice. We have to. You hate her. Why? She treats me like the help. Like the other. Even after the degrading task she made me do. And the beautiful baby that came out of it Ishmael, my sweet boy, you are the greatest gift I could ever imagine. But she looks at me, and she doesn't see me. And she looks at you, and all she sees is a threat. I can't accept that. Hmm. If you're Papa, wants to treat Ishmael like the firstborn instead of you, then all my sacrifice, 70 years, worthless, kaput. Your father looks at me, but he doesn't even see me anymore. He's talking to God instead. So I'm taking you to my people, Tatala, where you could be treated like the hope you are, my baby. Otherwise, we'll lose everything. We'll lose what makes us us. She isn't one of us, and neither is her kid. I don't want you to see yourself like him, OK? But I do see myself like him. And I like that, the songs he teaches me, the games we play together. I see him in me. 
I see me in him. And this whole thing is just taking us apart from one another. What's the point? Oh, Isaac, what do you know? I am your mother. Don't lecture me. We are being forced out. I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice, Ish. If I didn't do this, you would lose your birthright. Or share it. This, this isn't is something, something I, I want to do. Can't you see the humanity in her defending her child? You're asking me to do something I can't do. Humanity? She wouldn't know the word. She and I are nothing alike. I can't see anything good in her. But I can see the good in her. I think you two have lots in common. Why are you making me choose? One sec. I really want to talk this through. I think I need your help. Ever felt like you had to choose one side of an argument when you see hurt and humanity on both? Really asking. Raise your hand if you've ever had this happen to you. I love playing with my brother. We laugh together, we cry together. I don't want to be forced to choose between members of my family. I don't know if I like this story. I don't know if I want to be in this story if this is my role. I want to make this story go differently. How do we do it? You know, that's a really good question, Desi. I can now clearly see your Desi again with that beanie on. <laughs> and uh, I think it's time for us to bring this out of the Torah and into real life. So Hagar, take a moment to let her go and become Nama again so you can be here with us. And Sarah, you too can put the bag down, put the roll down, become Doris again, and let's get a closing blessing on this Aliyah. I think we all need it. I want to invite those of us who came up to celebrate new things, whether you're here on stage or standing with us uh, at home, may every new thing be celebrated, every new path, every new joy, every new step, so we'll have more to celebrate and less to worry about. Mazal tov, shana tova, here's to newness, here's to this blessing, and I invite you to gingerly step off the bima and onto the rest of the year so we can see how we uh, listen to Desi's big question. What do we do with this story? How do we tell a new way out of what we've inherited? Right. Let's get into this a bit. Are there any mothers in the room? Any parents or children struggling to see one another's perspective? Mm -hmm. You can raise your hand. That's okay. Anyone feeling like you've been caught in the crosshairs a lot this year? wondering if there is a way out. So we've all had moments this year when it was really challenging to see another person's perspective. We've all been in conflict, whether it's our best friend, 
our parents or the person on the news where you just want to throw something through the screen, we've all been in conflict this year. Raise your hand if you stopped talking to someone this year because you couldn't see eye to eye. Okay. Take a look around. Raise your hand if you stayed in relationship, but you just avoided that one topic like it didn't exist. Okay. Raise your hand if you managed to stay in relationship with someone you disagreed with long enough to see eye to eye a little bit more together. Okay. Well, we've got some wisdom in the room then about how to do this better. So we're going to learn from each other soon. Amichai. So I want to invite Sarah and Hagar to sit briefly and Doris and Naama to sit as well. This is an ancient story. It's more painful this year more important this year so we can really be part of the healing. So we want to hear from Hagar, from Sarah, from Avraham, from Yitzchak, from Ismail. And we're not going to do all of that today. But we want to echo some of what we know about this story, about these voices, about these hurts. So Desi, I invite you to find a seat as well. Grab one of the chairs. We can take that stool over there and come join us up here. And I want to ask you all, imagine, imagine you are Sarah. You're Sarah. You're in your 90s. You have a baby that you've waited for your whole life with Abraham. And you want to cherish that child like the apple of your eye. And you're about to make a decision. Your boy or the other boy. Ishmael or Yitzchak. Might not be an easy decision. Maybe it is. But just this moment where we just froze. Sarah, we want to hear from you. Are you in the room? Is there Sarah in the room who's willing to share with us very briefly? How does it feel to be at this moment? of conflict, of decision-making. Sarah is in your veins, in our DNA, in our story. Sarah, are you here? Can we hear from you? How does it feel right now? What are you feeling? Scared? Thank you, Sarah. Are you feeling fear? Threatened? Yeah, Sarah, we hear you feeling a threat. Protective. I'm feeling very protective of my child at all costs. Righteous. I'm righteous. This is the righteous thing to do. I am a mother first. Sarah, more from you up there? Now that I know what being a mother is like, I don't want to make a choice. To make a choice, do I have to look away from humanity? I feel possessive. I'm a mom, and I will do anything for my kid. Broken hearted. Misunderstood. Yeah, defensive. It's not my fault. It began before I was born. It's the system. So pause for a moment. This is the patriarchal story of the house of the patriarch that we inherited. It is a system, a binary either-or system, which we are dismantling here bit by bit. But let's hear from Hagal. Hagal, and take a breath if you too feel the voice of the ancient mother, Hajar, 
הגר, הגר, this moment that we hear, what is coming up for you? Wronged, I feel wronged, and I am angry. This is unfair. I feel betrayed. I feel rejection. I feel hurt. I feel used. I feel dehumanized. How will I survive? I am not trusting the promise that a great nation will emerge out of my child's line. So pause for a moment with Hagar. Pause with Sarah. You know, and I'm not going to call Abraham on today. He gets plenty of bandwidth. <laughs> But I do want to hear from the children. We heard... Isaac and Ishmael in one young boy in Desi's beautiful voice. We want to hear from the boys. We don't care which one right now. You are one of those two brothers. What is going on? This is the moment before you separate for quite a while before we bring you today together. I am confused. We are confused. This is bogus. I am sad. We are sad. I don't know what I want. I feel responsible for both of us. Why are we being punished for somebody else's mistakes? It is not fair. I am disappointed in our elders. We are disappointed in our elders. Yeah, they want us to play nice. What about them? Shame, and I can't finish the game, and I'm a kid, and this sucks. So folks, right now, here's what we want to invite you to do. Hear those echoing stories. You might recognize them for your own lives. Forget the politics for a moment. Family dysfunction is not unique to war, but that's when it is really bigger. And this is a family feud. So what we want to invite you to do for the next few minutes, if you may, and if you want, and folks online, either with someone you are there or in the chat, or with yourself, turn to each other, and talk for just a couple minutes. How do you show up in conflict? What helps you? What helps you when it is tough? In any way it is. So we can give Sarah, Hagar, and Isaac, and Ishmael, and all of us some tools for better management as we try and fix. Take this seriously, please, and take a moment to To share with each other, if you're sitting by yourself, turn to someone sitting next to you. What helps you handle conflict better? Conflict experts in the room. All you conflict experts in the room, see if you can come to a pause in the conversation you are having, and those of you that are online with us as well. Because we have just a, a few minutes to hear a few insights. We have just a few minutes to hear some insights from the wisdom that's in this room about how to be in conflict better, knowing that conflict is part of the human experience and we can do it in better and less good ways. What did you learn in that conversation? What's something you'd like to share with this room? What helps you? to stay in relationship when the going gets rough. 
And I know I'm looking in particular for Laser, where, but I don't know where he is. But I'm gonna, but I'm, I got my eye on you. But yeah. Maintain your love. So stay grounded in that value of love as you're in conflict. What else? My love for you is not based on agreement. Love transcends the idea of agreement. What else came up? What did you learn? Yeah. Okay, so staying grounded in breath. What keeps me in my body rather than shuttling off somewhere else when I'm in conflict? What else? Do I desire this friendship or do I not? I really want to stay. I need to hear that. Do I desire this friendship, this relationship, or do I not? It's an important question to ask when you're in conflict. Thank you. What else? Listen more, speak less. Just a few more. Yeah. So asking to understand, asking with real curiosity and the other person that was there. Yeah. Yeah, you can't control someone else and sometimes walking away can help. I did want to hear from Lazy. Having a sense of humor, remembering to laugh. Yes. Lewis, you're pointing to someone. Yes. Mm, you have to imagine the words that you're saying, how are they going to land with someone else? Put yourself inside their experience for a moment. Yeah, put yourself in their shoes. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I think in just a moment, we're going to bring this back together. Um, and thank you. I've been looking for you. Please. Beautiful. So I heard when when we're in that moment of heated conflict, that might not be the best time to solve the problem. We might need to figure out, how do I get a little more space around the problem? Individually, collectively, is it possible? How do we get more space around the problem so we can solve it with a clearer mind and a clearer heart? Thank you, I'm so glad I finally found your eyes. So let's take this back into the story um, and see if we can find a different ending, maybe one with less hurt and more healing. So Desi, are you ready to step back into Isaac and Ishmael mode? Yeah, okay. I'm ready. Uh, Nama, Doris, what about you? Yes. All right, I'm gonna hand it back to you then. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. I don't want to choose between you. I don't want our family to be broken in my name. I don't want either or I want both. You've been talking to me about my brother and expecting me to hold on to your anger, your frustration, your disappointment, your hope. I think maybe it's time for you two to talk to each other instead.
Isaac is my son. Not yet. But don't forget it. So as Sarah and Hagar are getting ready to not be in face-off, but in face-to-face, -face, we too deeply desire the same. Thank you for the wisdom of the youth to try and bring us closer to each other. If anyone here feels that this year you are ready, willing to do the hard work of face to face with somebody with whom you have a very different opinion, with whom it's hard to have a conversation about big stuff and the truth. And you want to commit on this year to engage not in face-offs, but in true dialogue, with curiosity and with patience, however it hurts, so we can try and heal. We want to invite you for this second Aliyah, on this new day of this new year. Whether you are at home or here, I invite you to rise. If you want to truly take on this commitment, maybe with somebody specific, maybe with yourself, maybe with your ancestry, with the Torah, maybe with someone really specific that you know, my God, I've been really avoiding this conversation, but I choose this relationship. I want to make it work. So I'll ask for you. No one said it's going to be easy. I invite you to rise if you're feeling the call. And if any of you feel up to the bima, just really a handful. Let's do this. story. We are here now. Send a kiss. Double click. We're here now. Let's bless together. Baruch et Havaya HaMevorach Baruch Havaya HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Havaya HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Havaya HaMevorach Le'olam אלוהינו רוח העולם, אשר בחר בנו עם כל העמים, ונתנה לנו את תורתו. ברוך אתה הוויה, נותן התורה. אמן. Vayera Adavar Meod Bene Abraham Aodot Beno said before Isaac 
is my son. And Ishmael is mine. <sighs> my AD is so torn up over this. And you think I'm not? Vayomer Elohim, El Avraham, El Yerah Benacha, Al Hanar, Vayel Amatecha, Kol, Asher Tomar Elecha, Sarah Shema Bekola, Kive Yifak, Yikare Lecha Zara. Look, I'm just an afterthought to you. Okay, no, no, don't, don't try to spin this with me. Let's. Call a slave a slave. But if we're both mothers to the same, by the same man, mm -hmm. we might as well take the time to see eye to eye. Ibrahim can be torn up all he wants. I'm torn up too. Fine, be torn up. But that doesn't change the reality for me and my son. Hmm. Yeah. Look. I'm just trying to take care of my own Hagar. I have to make sure my lineage survives. Vigamet ben ha'ama legoya simenu kizarachahu. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do too. And <laughs> that's the thing about you and me is that we're not just mothers. We're mothers of nations. What a responsibility. What a drag. <laughs> well, especially considering who's given the credit. Yeah, for less than half the work. Oh, he didn't carry any baby. Can you imagine? Not nice. Not nice. You know, it's so scary to have a child out in the world, to have a version of your story that lives on without you, that can make your name either great or despicable. Yeah, but that's how nations work. That's how people work. Uh -huh. And live. all you can do is just try and plant the right kind of seed. I want to laugh? No. I want to cry. <sighs> Both. Take a moment now to look at someone next to you, face to face. No words, just look. Maybe you'll want to laugh, or maybe you'll want to cry. And that might be enough. I want to invite those of you us with the courage to look face to face today and in this coming year to bless this blessing and to gently come down from the stage and folks at home as well, you all may be seated as we heed the blessing of the mothers and the blessing of the wise child. We want to take a moment for the healing that we all so need. 
Thank you, Sarah, for this Torah chanting. Thank you all for being part of this ritual telling. When our Torah is open, we believe our hearts are much more open to the healing that we need, each and every one of us. The fuat haguf, the healing of the body, the fuat hanefesh, the healing of the soul, and the healing that our nations need and all our people. Mi sheberach avoteinu veimoteinu, Avraham, Yitzchak, Ishmael veYaakov. Mi sheberacha imoteinu, Sarah, Hagar, Rivka, Rachel, Leah, Bilah, Zilpa. May the source of hope for all the ancestors be with us today. May the source of all things living help us see the living sacred in the face of every living being. On this day, as our hearts are ruptured, let the ones who are not home come home. And let the ones without a home rebuild the home. Let there be home inside the heart for every heart and every home. Let there be healing in the Holy Land where every human is a holy being and every home is a holy home. May there be healing for the rift between the children of Sarah and the children of Hagar, between the children of Abraham. May there be healing in the hearts of every human. May we be better beings on this planet, Mother Earth that wants us to be better at protecting us and her and all that lives. Please take a moment to think of someone in your life right now who could use a hug of healing, someone who would appreciate your reaching out for face to face repair. To try again and to try better.
that helped create today's storytelling. Thank you, Desi, whose B Mitzvah we're celebrating again. Thank you, Naama, a seasoned storytelling maven. And thank you for joining us as a brand new matriarch and storyteller, Doris. Thank you, Ben, for helping craft today's storytelling and Marika for that opening video. Thank you, Sarah, for the reader. We're going to raise and wrap this Torah before we hear the voice of the mothers in the sound of the shofar. And yes, we're running late as we do. So push your lunch plans a little bit later. To raise and wrap this Torah, we want to invite one of our new couples getting married this year, celebrating love. Alexa and Simon, come on up. Simon has been working out so he can do this. Alexa, it's easier for you, but here's a chair. If you're able to and want to rise, please do so. As we honor our Torah and honor our new translation that brings us together, face to face, eye to eye, with hope and love and truth. Sure, show off. Knees, core. Got this. Thank you. 